Sisters, your role is in the private sphere. We don't want to see you that much in public life. You don't belong that much in public life. We don't want to see you online. You don't need to be appearing in all these podcasts. You don't need to be on the program such as The Bitter Truth, beautifying yourself, speaking with men that are not mahram to you, speaking about inappropriate topics. And sisters, we don't need to see you on platforms giving sex advice to anyone. This is completely shameful, completely inappropriate. Completely against Islam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. The discussion of women online has always been, uh, Muslim women online has always been a big topic. Should Muslim women be online? How much presence should they have? Uh, what should they speak about? Should they appear on podcasts? Uh, with other brothers, how should that take place? Is it inappropriate? Is it something that is necessary? Is it Islamic against Islam? All right, and recently this discussion has been boiling over again, especially because of a clip that has gone viral from a show that's hosted by Brother Ali Dawa on his channel. And this show is called The Bitter Truth. And a small clip has been going viral, especially on Twitter, of a discussion that took place on this show and the highly inappropriate an explicit discussion and topic that was taking place uh, between uh, a brother and a sister. And so, Ali Sawa has been receiving a lot of criticism for this show. He has received this criticism in the past, but again, uh, recently, even more so than before. And so, on his channel, uh, he made a response uh, to this criticism. So, first of all, let's have a look at this clip. Uh, that's been causing this controversy and that he's had to respond to. Let's have a listen to this clip. I believe people exaggerated it, but I have to be just. And there's something that I'm going to inshallah talk about in a minute. So let's watch it. Here is the clip. But it's is not clip. satisfied in the bedroom. The wife does address it to the husband that he will shame her. He'll be like, oh, it's your fault. You can't be satisfied. What I say is depend how you approach it. So if your woman goes to you, you don't perform properly, that's going to demasculate you. But if she goes to you that let's try something different. Yeah, or, yeah. The approach. thing is you approach it in a way that you don't attack the man. You don't attack the man, yeah. but you kind of approach it in a different way. But if you go straight at him, of course he's going <laughs> to. So guys, that. So this is the, this clip that's been uh, going viral and you can see from this short clip on his show the bitter truth podcast uh, the discussion was revolving around men and their performance in the bedroom now you know anyone can clearly see this is a, a highly inappropriate topic and a discussion to be had between a man and a woman that are foreign to each other very highly inappropriate. So rightfully so, he's received a lot of criticism. Now, he made this uh, reaction video to explain and to clear some issues. But after listening to his reaction video, he's, he said, look, there's nothing wrong with the program. I'm going to continue with the program. But that little bit was a bit inappropriate. So we're going to take it out of the show. Right. And in that video that he made, he sits there and gives a justification why the show is valid and why he will continue with the show. So let's have a listen and see why he thinks this show should continue and why it's valid. Dear Sheikh, may Allah bless you and preserve you. You give great benefit to the Ummah and I always tell people to follow your, uh, watch your videos. However, we have spoken to far senior scholars Yes, and I know you're a high student of knowledge, but we're speaking to people who are on the level of an alim, and they have told us this is not free mixing, period. And the people I've spoken to in the background, I don't want to give names, yeah, because people are going to start attacking them, yeah. I've spoken to, they did not see to me as free mixing. They said to me that this show is two issues. Number one, tabarrush, makeup. And I try my best not to look to the opposite gender, so I don't know who's wearing makeup, because I don't know. My wife is a co -producer. So... He gives justifications why. So he says, we've spoken to new senior scholars. And there's a scholar, you know, he's got a large social media uh, following on, across all the platforms, Asim Al-Hakim. Most of you would have heard of him. And when he saw this program and this clip, he said, this is haram. So Ali Dao is responding to him, look, Shaykh, we respect you, but we've gone to senior ulama that are higher than you. 
and we've discussed with them, and they said this is not free mixing, right? which is very funny because <laughs> if you look at the program, it's the very definition of free mixing. We have men and women coming together that are not mahram to each other. There's no reason for them to be each other, and they're sitting there chatting with each other, and as we saw in that clip, they discuss highly inappropriate topics. So I would have thought that this is the very definition of what free mixing is in Islam. But he said, we've gone to these senior scholars. He doesn't name who these senior scholars are. And those senior scholars said, look, this is not free mixing. Okay, fine. Why don't these scholars, why don't you name them, or why don't they put their name to this fatwa? There shouldn't be anything, there shouldn't be afraid of any backlash, because if they're scholars and they've done their ishtihad, Islamic ishtihad, then they should say, this is our fatwa, this is the evidence, and present the evidence, and we'll judge the evidence that they've presented. But when you don't say who the scholars are, and you don't mention the evidences that were given, then, you know, it seems like something is not right. And he says, they said, pointed out some issues that tabaraj is an issue, Tabaruj is an issue. Tabaruj is when the woman beautifies herself. Makeup, perfume, the way she dresses, okay? She wants to catch attention. Okay, of course it's an issue. But the sisters are appearing on your show with Tabaruj. Most of these sisters are appearing. You can see they're clearly wearing makeup. They beautify themselves. They fix up their faces. They're dressed nicely. Some of them are appearing even... Uh, he says some of the sisters that they don't normally wear hijab will bring them on the show and we tell them to wear hijab. But the sisters come on wearing half hijab where their hair is still showing. So if they told you Tabaraj is an issue, then you haven't looked after that aspect. They are doing, the sisters are beautifying themselves and are doing Tabaraj on that show. We come and we have alhamdulillah, like we, the fatwa we follow is what? When we're giving dawah in speaker's corner to non-Muslim women, Free protocols we follow from the scholars, which is number one, is what? That, it's in public. Number two is pertaining to dawah. Number three, when the dawah is done, you go your separate ways. Those women we speak to who are sometimes half naked, we can't control what they wear. In the bitter truth show, we can. So this whole issue of free mixing, this time, this is not even an issue for me. Move it to the, move it to the side. I just want to apologize. So he says, the scholars that we discussed with, when we go to speaker's corner and we give dawah there, uh, there's non-Muslim women. And obviously they don't have hijab on and they beautify themselves. So he said, they told us you can give da'wah to them under three conditions. It's in public. It's for da'wah purposes. And then after that, you don't chit chat with them. You go your separate ways. Now, I don't see how that fatwa applies to speaking to non-Muslim women to give them da'wah. How does it apply with this show? Where here you got both of them, the brothers and sisters, they're Muslims. And he said that they told us if it's for da'wah purposes, we can speak to these non-Muslim women. Okay, these brothers and sisters, it's not da'wah purposes. They're not giving da'wah to each other, not bringing each other to Islam. So I don't see how that fatwa that they gave you, how does it fit in this circumstance on this show? The show, And we are talking about issues pertaining to what? Look, let me read you some of the stuff, yeah? Do, women, do men want career wives? This is breaking down the family unit, okay? Sisters who want to be... Boss babes or whatever This is destroying the family unit Which has a ripple effect on the ummah What did we discuss after that? Uh, can I spy on my wife's phone? Yes, you should not spy on your wife's phone We discussed that An important topic That causes so many arguments In the marital unit Yeah, Should in not get involved In marital disputes Again, one of the biggest factors Of marriage divorce uh, Divorce is happening And why does her virginity matter? For so many men Men, they end marriages because of this. So we advise men How to deal with it And we try to get the sisters To understand the psychology of a man why you, uh, will you marry a divorcee? Again, a big phenomenon, a big issue of divorcees, they come with these baggage, etc. We talk about this phenomenon. Why? There's so many divorced single mothers who are not married. There's this, this uh, stigma on them, yeah? Who belongs in the kitchen? <coughs> Another issue which causes so many problems in the marital unit. So he says, look, you know, to give justif why, why do we have this program? What's the point of this show? He's giving his justification. Why, do I, why did I set up this show? Why did I make it happen? He says, look, we've got a lot of issues in Muslim marriages. So we're bringing brothers and sisters on this platform to try and deal, get the brother's side and get the sister's side and have a discussion around these issues. And he goes through some of the topics, issues with divorce, where you marry a divorcee, um, the issue of uh, the woman, uh, the bus babes, is, does the woman have too much power in the house? Uh, should the in-laws get involved? 
okay, is the woman's role in the kitchen, okay, all valid uh, important issues that need to be discussed. And, you know, one of them he said was um, woman's virginity. You know, does the woman have to be a virgin? Do you want to know what if she isn't? Do you want to know that she's a virgin uh, before you get married to her? Now, I would have thought, you know, when he's going through these topics, that a topic such as the issue of virginity and when you, uh, whether the brothers want to marry a virgin or not, I would have thought this is a very highly inappropriate topic for brothers and sisters that are not mahram to each other, that are foreign to each other, to come together and to be discussing this, this, this issue with each other. I would have thought, you know, that, that's just glaringly obvious. This is completely inappropriate, a completely inappropriate topic to be discussed in this format. Ali Dawah, now I have a lot of respect for Brother Ali Dawah. And he's done a lot of work. He's got a massive channel, mashallah. And he's, he's well known. Um, he's at the forefront of confronting the kuffar and their arguments, debates. Um, the whole issue was uh, with Gaza recently, mashallah. But look, in the end, if there are things that are incorrect, they should be called out. And we need to know the Islamic position on these issues, regardless of the personality or our like for that individual. This show, it's a very problematic show. And the justifications that he's given don't hold any weight. He's mentioned scholars that he won't name. He's mentioned conditions for giving da'wah to non-Muslim women. But I don't see how these conditions fit in this program, seeing that they're both Muslim. And in the end, the show, it's, it's like a chit-chat show that you see that the kuffar do, where brothers and sisters come together, they sit together. As you can see, some of the topics he went through, they're highly inappropriate, such as women's virginity and uh, performance issues. And I've watched a bit of the show where you can see there's chit chat, there's laughing, the sisters are appearing uh, with tabarruj, beautifying themselves. Some of them are appearing in, in half hijab. So the justifications that he gives don't really hold any weight. And the show is highly problematic and highly inappropriate. Especially, look, we, we understand there's a lot of issues in the, in the, specifically in the West, amongst the Muslims, and there's a lot of issues in their marriages. And there's a lot of issues that need to be dealt with. Divorces, um, the woman's role, the man's role, the issue of the in-laws, and many, many other topics. And that's all absolutely valid that needs to be spoken about. But you can deal with these issues in a different format. I mean, the issue is very, very simple in the end. Yes, I understand, he says, we want to hear the sister's side. Yes, we do. And we want to hear the brother's side. But you don't need to bring them together to discuss the issue. Especially because they're just average people giving personal opinions. In the end, all of these issues, Islam has a hukum. Islam has a rule. We want to get to the one and all the issues and then see what does Islam say about this issue. You don't want to solve it by having um, brothers and sisters just come on and give their personal opinions on these matters. That doesn't solve the issue. So really... It's, it's a very simple fix. What you should be doing, there are many options. One of them is you have the sisters have their own podcast, just the sisters with no men. And you can have a knowledgeable sister, a sister that has a knowledge in Islam. She comes on the show and the sisters put forth their, uh, their issues to the sister and she gives them the Islamic opinions. And you can have another show for the brothers where they come on. There's a scholar or someone learned or deals, someone deals with these issues and they put forth their issues and that person gives them the Islamic opinion. It's very, very simple. Or you can have a program where you bring in a scholar weekly and he just caters to the sisters, that scholar. They send their messages online to him and they can ask all these inappropriate questions but without them physically speaking to him. Okay, but And nobody knowing who they are, so they remain anonymous. And you can have a similar program for the brothers. So the point is, there's no need for this program, let alone to give any justification. It's you know, very, and what makes this even worse is that uh, the presence of the sisters online now has gotten to a point where it's become very, very problematic. And to highlight this issue, one of the sisters that came on that program, she's got her own social media platform. And... The things that the sister discusses online, I'm going to show a little clip, and you'll see that it's, uh, you know, for her to be on this show and for the sisters to be online in this way and to speak like this, there's something very, very wrong here. And we've gone way too far on this issue. Let's have a listen to what this sister discusses on her platform. 
clitoris you need to stimulate her clip you, women you yourself if you observe and you like you know during sex or even after sex look at your clit you'll realize how it grows in size it's very fascinating actually how it grows in size and it becomes hard like like a man's penis and that's how you know that you've actually been stimulated the right way clitoris i mean subhanallah i'm lost for words i don't even know what to say about that i mean for anybody to think that it's you know in any way shape or form appropriate for sisters to appear online and to be on the pit of, on, on, in Ali Da'wah's show and these sisters such as his sister are discussing explicit inappropriate things in a way it, you know it's just like it's so casual I mean what is she talking about like sisters look at your part and it should be like this and it should be like that and get stimulated like this I mean what exactly is going on right Things have gotten completely out of hand and the sisters now are acting so inappropriately. And we've got to ask the question, I mean, these sisters, what, 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 you know, I mean, what do you know about Islam? I mean, how is this, how do you think this is Islamic? I mean, where is your husband? Where is your father? Where, where is your guardian? Where did you get this understanding that this is appropriate or halal in Islam for a woman to appear, to appear online? And discuss these topics in such a casual way, highly inappropriate, explicit issues. I mean, in the end, Islamically, sister, look, what happens in the bedroom doesn't need to be discussed in this way. I mean, Islamically, we're not trying to fulfill our utmost desires after kuffar are. Yes, it's important that the uh, uh, the wife and the husband are satisfied in the bedroom. Right? But in the end, we're not going to have sex shows. For the brothers and sisters, you know, to show them all the ways that they can uh, gain, uh, uh, satisfy uh, their desires and gain the utmost pleasure. This is not the purpose of Islam. Even if you could do that, this is what, what the, this is not what the Islamic household is about. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not trying to fulfill all our desires. We're not trying to fulfill them to the utmost in every single possible way. Once you treat sex like this, what happens to the kafar will happen to us. They treated sex as a, a vital issue. Um, the desires are so important. Stimulation, orgasm. Until it's reached the point where they're not, they're, not, they're no longer satisfied with the normal average thing. They're chasing even something more desirable, more desirable, more stimulating. Until the, we see the corruption that they've gotten themselves in. So the Islamic marriage is not like this. The sex life of the husband and the wife, while there should be pleasure, and it's important to each one of them, they shouldn't be sent to sex therapy and following sex shows to see how they can pleasure themselves uh, you know, to the utmost and fulfill all their desires. This is not their purpose in Islam. Look, uh, Brother Ali Dawa mentioned another thing uh, during this uh, reaction justification video. He says, look, free mixing, is, this, this show is not free mixing, it's not an issue. And in the end, if some things are discussed, then... You know, and you hear this phrase a lot of times, there's no haya in the deen, there's no shyness in the deen. Meaning, look, there's, there's things that need to be spoken about and asked about, because they're important. Right? Now, this, this, this principle, I mean, it's uh, taken way out of context and used in a completely inappropriate way. Yes, there's something in Islam where if, if there's an issue that you have, a, 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 husband, a man or a woman, that needs to be asked about, you shouldn't be shy about asking it. And this goes back to a hadith, and he mentions this, he uh, indicates to this hadith in, in his reaction video. It's a hadith that's been mentioned by Abu Dawood. Um, sorry, the hadith has been mentioned by Imam Bukhari. And this is uh, one woman, uh, she came to the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she said to him, oh, Allah is a possible, I was the wife. Oh, Allah is a possible, I was the wife of... Rafi'a and he divorced me irrevocably. Divorced irrevocably means that, you know, we know in Islam, a husband and a wife, the husband can divorce his wife and he's got three divorces. Once he divorces her the third time, he's no longer allowed to take her back unless she goes back, goes and marries another man and that man divorces her. Then that previous husband can marry her again. This is what divorced irrevocably means. So she said he divorced me irrevocably. Then I married Abdurrahman ibn Zubayr, who by Allah, our Allah's messenger, has only something like a fringe of a garment. 
showing the fringe of her veil. And here what she's referring to, to his private parts, it's something, you know, it's not satisfying her, she's not happy compared to her previous husband. So there's issues sexually in the marriage. So Khalid ibn Sa'id, who was standing at the door, who had not been admitted, heard her statement and said, Abu Bakr, why do you not stop this lady from saying such things openly before Allah's Messenger? So then they said, no, but Allah's Messenger did nothing but smile. So Prophet smiled, then he said to the lady, perhaps you want to return to Rifa'ah, meaning her first husband. He said, that is impossible unless Abdul Rahman consummates his marriage with you. And that became the, the tradition after him. So yes, in this hadith, the woman had a, there was a ish, sexual issue in the marriage, right? And she came to the Mishra Salam and mentioned it to him. So we extract from this hadith, yes, there's no shyness. This woman was, didn't go gather a, a group of the, a group of women, a group of men, companions, and put them together and said, let's come, come together and discuss this issue because this issue in the marriages. When we say there's no shyness in religion, meaning the woman, just like she went to the Mishra Salam, she went to get a ruling, a Islamic ruling for her issue. So the Prophet was judging in this case. And so the scholar said, yes, a woman can go to an Islamic scholar, can go to an Islamic judge, and she can discuss her issue with him, no matter how inappropriate it is, no matter how explicit it is, in this issue there's no shanas, she can ask so she can get the necessary ruling. But that's asking a judge. Her asking just the judge, not going in front of a, a public format, in front of hundreds of thousands of people to discuss the issue of performance and my husband can't satisfy me. Right? So the hadith is applied way out of context and it has nothing to do with what Brother Ali Dawa is speaking about. Right? There's no shyness in the religion. The, the sisters can go to a scholar, a sheikh, and personally ask them a question privately about their issues. This is what it means where there's no shyness uh, in Islam. Look, why is this issue important? Why discuss this issue? In the end, we need to understand Allah SWT created men and He created women and He gave them different roles. Allah SWT defined their roles. And Islam came to segregate public life between men and women and to give man his role and women their role. And men, mostly their role is in the public sphere. And women, mostly their role is in the private sphere. This is the way it is Islamically. Unfortunately, these days, because of the Western countries that we live in and sec liberal secular values, the role of women has been completely corrupted. It's been corrupted in the minds of the Muslims. It's been corrupted in the minds of the sisters. Until now, the women act in a way that's highly un-Islamic and highly inappropriate until, until we're seeing all these issues that are appearing online with the sisters and the presence of the sisters online. And I just, look, this is a much, much larger topic. And really, it's a, it's a big discussion. But I just want to look at a short hadith to see how we should fundamentally view the role of women in society. So this hadith was narrated by Abu Dawood from Abu Usaid al-Ansari. He heard the Prophet ﷺ while he was coming outside the mosque and men mixed with the women in the street. He heard him say to the women, Draw back, for you women must not walk in the middle of the road. Keep to the sides of the road. Then the women walked so close to the walls that their garments rubbed against them. Now, there are many, many ahadith right, to give us guidance on this issue. But this is fundamentally the way we should view this whole issue. When it comes to women in public life, as Prophet ﷺ said, you should be as... Uh, shouldn't be so conspicuous in public life. You should be trying to hide yourself. You shouldn't be drawing attention to yourself. When you are out in public life and you need to walk the streets and you need to go to the market places, Prophet is telling the women, stay away from the middle of the road, meaning don't draw attention to yourself. Stay away from the men. Don't be in positions where they can look at you, where they can interact with you, where you might meet and mix together. And this is from this hadith and many a hadith we understand this is the way of, uh, this is how public life is for women. When you are in public, there's a certain etiquette, there's a certain dress code. You shouldn't be beautify yourself, you shouldn't have perfume on, you shouldn't have beautiful clothes to bring attention to yourself. You should just stay away from 
large gatherings, crowds, men, coffee places, as the Prophet is telling in the hadith to the women, stay to the sides of the road. And as we see this Ramadan in all the Western countries, when we see all the festivities that are occurring at night in the Ramadan, and you see the nightlife that suddenly springs up in Ramadan, which is all un-Islamic, and then you see the sisters just out mingling like, like it's absolutely normal. They're dressed inappropriately, they're in inappropriate places, there's, there's men all around, and you see this whole issue of shyness has completely broken down. That's why this is a big, big issue. Because this whole Islamic etiquette of women, how they interact and act in public life, has almost been completely destroyed. So my sisters in Islam, and my brothers that are married and responsible for their women folk, look, sisters, your role is in the private sphere. We don't want to see you that much in public life. You don't belong that much in public life. We don't want to see you online. You don't need to be appearing in all these podcasts. You don't need to be on the program such as the bitter truth, beautifying yourself, speaking with men that are not mahram to you, speaking about inappropriate topics. And sisters, we don't need to see you on platforms giving sex advice to anyone. This is completely shameful, completely inappropriate, completely against Islam. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, we shouldn't be emotional around this issue. Don't be affected by liberalism, secularism, this whole topic of gender equality. We're talking about the laws of our Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the role He defined for women in Islam. Your role primarily is a mother and a wife to look after the household, to be in the home. Your, your home duties, cooking, cleaning, all of that, this is the honorable duty that Islam has set for you. It's not to say that it's haram for a woman to be online. Or it's haram to be, uh, for a woman to be out in public. But she's got to follow the Islamic etiquettes. And the public sphere is not primarily her role where she should be, she should be, should be spending most of her time. And she certainly, the women should not appear online in this manner the way they are appearing today. So Brother Ali Dawa, we know the work you've done for Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. But this is a vital issue for the Muslims and you shouldn't be further confusing the Muslims on this issue. And, you know, being persistent in, in, in not understanding there's, a, there's, there's problems with this program, problems with the format, especially this program. Uh, you can you can have, deal with these issues in, 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 in completely different ways. There's other alternatives to separate the men, have their own program, separate the women, have their own program. Have a shaykh and the sisters send through their messages online and he can uh, answer them. Right? There are many alternatives. So the Muslims, we need to be at the forefront now to, you know, to recalibrate the minds of the Muslims and the sisters on this topic, on this issue, and give them the Islamic culturing. And this is how Islam has defined the role of the woman in Islam. And most of what we are seeing today is completely inappropriate and un-Islamic. And we need to clarify these issues. Zakumullah khairan. Please like the video, please comment on the video, and please subscribe to the channel.